Hello everyone, this is Stella. I'm here to talk to you about um, some questions that many of um, inquired. And many are asking me this question, what is the truth? Uh, if you have left a cult, where do you find the truth? And how do you see it? Have you found peace within yourself? This is what I want to say. It is so easy for us looking for um, some kind of truth, some kind of knowledge. And that is exactly what happened in the times of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Uh, when Adam and Eve were having this peace with God, uh, the serpent came to them and said, Are you sure you cannot eat the fruit from this forbidden tree? If you eat this, this is going to make you wise, and this is going to be delicious. And, and so Eve took that. When you think about that, it is about the appetite, uh, one thing. And another thing is um, the serpent said you'll be able to see things that you couldn't before. Being able to see things that you couldn't being able to know something that you couldn't, making you wiser. I think we all have this uh, desire, wanting to be wiser, wanting to know something better than others, wanting to be the chosen people, wanting to be the chosen uh, organization. And we seek for that. What is the truth? So if you have left, do you now have the truth? Now I'm in this group, so now I have the truth. Now I'm, on, I'm out of that group, I have the truth. What is the truth for you? And what is the purpose of having the truth for you? I want to ask that question for you. What is really the ultimate goal of having some kind of knowledge of the truth? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, you may have all the knowledge and all the faith, but if I have not love, this is in verse 2, I am nothing. You may have all the knowledge of the Bible. You may have all the knowledge of the truth, but if you do not have love, you are nothing, it says in the Bible. What does that mean? This, uh, it says in the Bible also that knowledge is important. Having the great knowledge, having a right knowledge of God. It's not just any knowledge. We can seek for any kind of knowledge. We can study so much of this world, all kinds of technology, science, medicine, or whatnot. All kinds of med uh, information and knowledge is out there. And the knowledge is that the Bible is talking about is not any kind of knowledge. It is the knowledge of God. Fear the Lord. That is the beginning of the knowledge. So here, I want to say that why, why is it that it becomes nothing if we do not have love? Because the Bible says, God is love. He says he himself is love. Because of the love, because of that love, he created the world because of that love he created us he did not have to he did not have to give us the freedom of will because of his love he did him allowing things doesn't necessarily mean that he is allowing um doesn't necessarily mean that he is desiring for that Yes, he did give us that choice to do evil. The choice that we could use to go against God, to disobey God. But that doesn't mean that he desired for it. I think we need to make that distinction pretty clearly. It's in the Bible. Like Many people ask me, many people ask this question, why did he even create the free of will, freedom of will? The, the forbidden tree, how, and this is going to be a big discussion, but I'm not here to discuss that yet. 
Why did he allow slavery? Slavery. Why did he allow evil in this world? And why did he allow freedom of will? And how else could he allow his love to be fully shown, fully shown without that? How can you fully love and express your the full extent of love without giving that person the freedom of will? He could, it doesn't mean that he didn't have the choice. He also had the choice of making the things by force. He could make us like robots, like some say. He could make us conditionally doing something and not being able to do other things by birth, by creation. But he didn't. He made things such a way that we would have the freedom of will. And we would use that to glorify him and to love him back, just like he loves us. And the thing is, the universe, not just the humanity, all have the same free will and they are using it to obey him. And that is the second nature for them in first nature. And that is just the way things are. We find it very difficult, so we think that it's just not easy, and why is he doing this? We are complaining animals. We like to complain about things that we cannot do, we have hard times doing. But here's the thing, that, uh, just because of the, the fact that we have hard times doesn't mean that it's bad for us, and also it doesn't mean that God is also one to blame. Oh uh, yeah, unfortunately the fall had happened in the beginning and because of that we have the sinful nature by birth by birth. But thankfully God did not forsake us. He did not leave us alone because he had another plan for us. If he is God who is stubborn, who is harsh, who is very distant, who is negligent, he didn't have to come up with another plan. But he did. He had this another plan by sending his son for us, which is the story that we all know. That was the purpose of Old Testament. He saw that the humanity fell, but he didn't want to forsake them. He wanted to give them another chance. He wanted to have this reconciliation with us. So he, he promises that he will send the promised son, the only son, Jesus Christ, to this earth. So the New Testament, he comes. All the prophecies were all about him. It was all pointing to him. And New Testament, Jesus actually comes. But that doesn't mean that people recognized him. That is why he had to come, talk to them, show them miracles, and also fulfill many prophecies. And that is the only way people could see him, recognize him as the son of God. Just like he, you know, prophesied that he will come in parables. He spoke in parables. But all those parables also led to Christ himself. It was all about how the kingdom of God works and how Jesus will come and save his people. And what did the disciples do after Jesus left? So Jesus, by dying on the cross before that, before the, di the disciples, before that, him dying on the cross was the essential point for the humanity where we could say, now we don't have to offer all those sufferings, all those sacrifices that will really not do much. It was temporary, and he gave himself once for all for us. So now the reconciliation is made, but that was not the end. After he died on the cross, he rose again. He went up to the heaven. Why? It seemed like nothing has happened. Nothing changed. Why is it that some, you know, it seems like things are quiet and things are just 
not really drastically change. But it has changed. Why? We don't have to give the sacrifices. That's one explicit thing. Another thing is that Jesus, even though he could just end everything at that time, he waited. He is waiting. Um, it says in the Bible that he's waiting so that he, he could wait for all to come to repentance. When he finishes everything by the end of his cross, the time when he, uh, he pays for the sin, the sinful consequences that we have all made, then it was only those people who were around his time, around in his area, who recognized him that will be saved. And this is why the disciples were to go spread this gospel, the good news, to all the other areas, so that people who do not know, who do not know about Christ yet, will know. Same thing applies to right now, to present time. People do not know about Christ, what he has done, what we have now, the salvation as a gift, the forgiveness of God that we have. Only if we know and receive it, it's ours. So he's waiting for us to take it, to receive it. And he's waiting so that we can all see it, receive it. And when he comes, we will welcome him and embrace him and give him the glory. And we will come to repentance. We will be reconciled. The humanity will be reconciled with Christ and God. The broken relationship that was happened, that had happened in Genesis, the book, first book of uh, the whole Bible, will be ending in Revelation in New, New Jerusalem, where we are bonding with Christ and God again, reuniting, connecting with Christ and God once again. I really look forward to that day. And the truth is, it is not something different. It is not something special. It is not something too distant. It is not just about knowing this too. I really want to urge everyone to think about this. What is Jesus? What does Jesus' death mean to you? His death, his, the salvation plan, what does it mean to us? There is going to be nothing if we know so much about the Bible and the knowledge and the true knowledge or the special knowledge or whatever it is that you call it. Without God, who is love within us, it will become nothing. The whole point was to be uniting with God who is love so that we can have him within us, our temple. The Bible says, do you not know that you are the temple of God? We are the temple. We are to serve him in our bodies, in our soul, in our spirit. Serve him, fear him, respect him, and love him with the love that he, with the love that he has given us. And this is my message for you guys. I found that peace with God because I found that I can be reunited with him and I can be united with him in the present and also in the future where, where, where he comes again, uh, the new Jerusalem, just like the revelation talks about, we will see him. We will have the place to live with him. We don't need sacrifices anymore. We don't have to have death or losses or griefs anymore. No more tears, it says. He's waiting so that we can all live together. And with the spirit of God, the spirit of love, to love one another, to love one another. And how great it would be if we only had love to one another. No injustice no racism, no favoritism, no grieving, no losses, no death, and no comparisons. We don't have to even distinguish what is what and what. This is the world full of falsehoods, false teachings, 
and we look forward to that day where Jesus himself will teach us and guide us to the right way. And he has given the Bible to us for the same reason, so that we can see him, we can find him, the truth, who says, I am the truth, the life, the way. And he's the source of life. He's the source of hope. I want to share that with you. Thank you.